Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model 6400 Power Sweeper. Not only will this machine perform well the day you get it, but for a long time thereafter. To clean with your Model 6400, simply get into the driver's seat, turn on the machine, confirm the vacuum system is on, increase the engine speed to high, confirm the hopper door is open, lower the main brush and side brush if needed, and propel forward at about 3 to 5 miles per hour. This video is presented in five sections. Pre-operational checks, operating the machine, emptying and cleaning the machine, post-operational checks, and machine controls. Pre-operational checks. In order to keep your machine in peak running condition, it is important to perform daily service checks before you start sweeping. Open the engine compartment and check the oil level. If necessary, add enough oil to reach the full mark. If your machine is equipped with a liquid cooled engine, you will need to check the engine coolant level, the condition of the V-belt, and the radiator cooling fins for blockage. They should not be obstructed so that the air can flow freely through the radiator. The vacuum fan belt should also be checked for wear and proper adjustment. Check the optional air filter service indicator, if so equipped. It indicates when to clean or replace the air filter element. If the air filter is clogged, the red line in the indicator will be at the bottom of the window. The indicator can be reset by pressing the button on top of the indicator. On liquid cooled engines, remove and clean the air filter dust cover daily. When replacing the cover, be sure the arrows are pointing upward. Check the hydraulic fluid level by removing the breather cap on the hydraulic tank. Check the skirts in the brush compartment for wear or tears. Proper dust control depends on their condition. The hopper left front skirt should also be checked to see that it is within one eighth inch of the floor. The brushes are extremely important for top sweeping performance. Neither brush should have wire, string, rope, or banding material wrapped around them. You should also remove and rotate the main brush at least once a week. This will ensure even wear for maximum brush life. When securing the main brush idler hub, the T-bolt should be secure but not tightened with a wrench. The tab inside the brush compartment door will keep the T-bolt from loosening. This system allows for the main brush to be removed easily without the use of tools. Release the latches and open the hopper dust filter cover to check the dust filter and seals. Lift the filter and check the seal on the bottom of the filter. Also look for tears and confirm that it is not impacted with dirt and dust. Check the permafilter for any debris or dirt that may be blocking the airflow path. Close the hopper dust filter cover and secure the latches. Check the seal on the hopper opening. Operating the machine. Once you are seated in the operator's seat, adjust both the seat and steering wheel to your comfort. With the throttle lever in the lowest setting, turn the key to the right to the start position. On machines equipped with gas or LP engines, pull out the choke. Once the engine is started, slowly push the choke lever in. If your machine is equipped with a diesel engine, the ignition key should be turned fully counterclockwise and held until the glow plug indicator light goes out. This allows the glow plugs to heat up the compression chamber, which aids in starting a cold engine. Once the indicator light goes out, the engine can be started by turning the ignition switch clockwise to the start position. 
On the far left of the operator is the vacuum fan duct and the filter shaker control. For normal sweeping, confirm that the lever is in the center position. Just to the left of the operator is the engine throttle lever, the main brush control, and the hoppered control levers. Whenever you are sweeping, the engine speed should be pushed all the way forward to the rapid speed setting. The hopper door opened and the main brush lever set forward to the adjustable stop. The side brush is great for sweeping right up to curbs, racks, and walls. If the side brush is to be used, lower it using the lever on the right side of the control panel in front of the operator. The brush pressure can be adjusted by turning the handle above the directional control pedal. The main brush and the side brush both start automatically when lowered and stop when raised. For best results while sweeping, propel the machine slowly, about as fast as a person walks, and overlap two or three inches on each path. If you've never driven a tenant machine, spend a few minutes cleaning with your machine in an open area. Because it steers using a single rear wheel, it is extremely responsive to steering wheel movement. Emptying and cleaning the machine. Once the hopper becomes full, it is time to empty the hopper and clean the machine. Run the filter shaker 30 to 60 seconds to shake the filter clear of dust. To dump the hopper, hold the hopper door lever back until the door is fully closed. If your machine is equipped with the optional hopper door closed indicator light, the light will illuminate. Hold the hopper raise lever back until the hopper is fully raised. Place the hopper over the container or the site where you will dump the contents. While the hopper is being dumped, the shaker system should be operated to clean the filter. Open the hopper door by pushing the hopper door lever forward. After the hopper is empty, close the hopper door by holding the lever back until the door is fully closed and back away from the dump site. Then, hold the hopper lower lever forward until the hopper is completely lowered. Post-operational checks. After you're finished emptying the machine, there are a couple of things that should be checked to make sure it's ready for use the next day. Check the main and side brushes for wear, damage, or debris. Check the brush compartment skirts for wear and damage. Once you are done operating for the day, return your machine to its parking place. Set the parking brake, reduce the engine speed to idle, and turn off the ignition switch. Machine controls. If you've never used the machine before, here's a quick orientation you'll find handy. Let's look at the controls and the instrumentation. To the far left of the operator is the vacuum fan airflow and shaker motor control. If the lever is in the middle position, the brush compartment, hopper, and dust filter compartment are vacuumized. If the lever is to the right, the airflow is blocked. This setting is used when sweeping in a damp area where dust control is not required and you need to protect the dust filter from being damaged by moisture. If the lever is held in the left position, the shaker motor used to clean the dust filter runs. This shaker system should be used often for at least 30 to 60 seconds every time. A clean filter provides the best dust control. The filter shaker system should also be used when the hopper is being emptied. Immediately to the operator's left are the controls for the engine speed, main brush, hopper door position, and hopper position. To increase the engine speed to a working speed, move the speed control lever to the full forward position. To decrease the engine speed before turning off the engine, pull the lever to the full back position. To lower the main brush to the working position, pull back slightly, lean it to the right, and allow it to move forward until it rests against the adjustable stop. To raise the main brush before parking the machine, pull the lever fully back, lean it to the left, and lower it into the locked up position. To adjust the main brush pattern, the adjustable stop can be moved forward for more brush contact and backward for less brush contact. Simply turn the handle counterclockwise to loosen the jam nut, move it to the desired position, and secure it by turning the handle clockwise until secure. To shut the hopper door, hold the lever back until the door is fully closed. If your machine is equipped with the optional door closed indicator light, the light will turn on when the door is fully closed. To open the door, hold the lever forward until the door is fully open. To raise the hopper, 
hold the lever back until the hopper is fully raised. To lower the hopper, hold the lever forward until the hopper is fully lowered. Safety note. Any time you leave or work around your machine with the hopper up, the hopper safety arm must be deployed and the parking brake set. In front of the operator, on the left end of the control panel, are eight indicator lights. Some of them are optional. Starting at the top left and working down. The charging system condition light. This light will be on if there is a fault in the charging system. The engine oil pressure light. This light will be on if there is a loss of engine oil pressure. The engine temperature light. This light will be on if the engine temperature exceeds normal operating temperatures. The thermocentry light. This light will be on if there is excessive heat in the hopper. The fuel level indicator. If your machine is equipped with an LPG fuel system, this light will turn on when the fuel level is low. This will indicate to the operator that there is about 15 minutes of fuel remaining. If your machine is equipped with a diesel engine, this light will be on when the glow plug system is being used. The optional dust filter clog light. This light will be on if the dust filter is clogged. This indicates that running the filter shaker system is required. The optional hopper door position light. This light will be on when the hopper door is closed. The optional hydraulic filter bypass light. This light will be on if the hydraulic filter becomes clogged. This indicates to the operator that the hydraulic oil filter should be changed. To the right of the indicator light panel is the fuel gauge used for gas and diesel powered machines. Below the fuel gauge area on gas and LPG powered machines is the choke knob. Pull the knob out to aid in cold starting. As the engine warms up, the choke knob can be slowly pushed in for normal operation. To the right of the steering column is the hour meter, which records the machine operating hours. The steering column tilt knob allows the steering column to be adjusted to the operator's comfort. To the lower right of the steering tilt knob is the horn button. Above the horn button is the ignition switch. On diesel powered machines, the decal above the ignition switch will have a symbol representing the glow plug system. The glow plug system should be used in cold weather. It is activated by turning the ignition switch fully counterclockwise and holding it until the indicator light goes out. On gas and LPG machines, simply turn the ignition switch clockwise until the engine starts. To the right of the ignition switch is the side brush control handle. To lower the side brush, pull back slightly on the handle, lean it to the left, and lower it into the working position. To raise the side brush, pull the handle back, lean it to the right, and lower it into the locked up position. As mentioned earlier, the side brush deflection can be adjusted by using the handle above the directional control pedal. To increase the side brush deflection, turn the handle counterclockwise. To decrease the side brush deflection, turn it clockwise. If your machine is equipped with headlights and taillights, to the right of the side brush control handle is the headlight and taillight switch. To turn them on, press the top of the switch. If this switch is left in this position, the lights will automatically shut off when the ignition switch is turned off. To turn them off when the ignition switch is on, press the bottom of the lights control switch. The machine speed and direction of travel are determined by a single foot pedal. The further you push down on the toe, the faster you go forward. The more you push down on the heel, the faster you go in reverse. The service brake is located to the left of the directional control pedal. The parking brake is toe operated. To set the parking brake, depress the service brake pedal and push the lever above the pedal with your toe. The brake will stay in the locked position until the service brake pedal is depressed again and released. Electrical circuit breakers protect the system in case of an electrical malfunction. The breaker can be reset by pushing the button in the center of the breaker after it has been allowed to cool. If the circuit breaker cannot be reset or trips again, qualified service personnel should be notified. If you've never operated a tenant machine before, spend just a couple of minutes familiarizing yourself with these controls. Performing the daily service checks and following the proper operating procedures for this particular machine will ensure 
that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance problems, effectively enhances your work environment, and we're sure you'll be happy with your Tenant Model 6400 for a long time.